All right, good morning guys. Well, good afternoon at this point because it's already halfway through the day. So today is the dino day uh, for the Turbo and Tigris. So I am here at the dino now. I showed up about an hour early because I got to let the car cool down because I do have to change the injectors still and stuff. I'm gonna wait probably, I don't know, whatever. But you get the point. I, I gotta change out some parts so I wanted to have time for the engine to cool down a little bit so that way I could be as prepared as possible because I just like being that guy. So um, yeah, uh, for projections, I'm not really hoping for any sort of special number. I mean, 330-ish would be cool right around there. As for torque, I don't really know what to expect, honestly. Um, right now, I am running, for those of you just popping into the video, it is a stock K28 II. I've had to swap in here for like four years. And a uh, custom turbo setup I built myself, stainless log manifold, three inch downpipe to three inch exhaust, two and a half inch intercooler piping and such. So that's what we are looking like right now with a 7.25 pound spring. So. Uh, I do have an electronic boost controller, hopefully it's wired up correctly and we can get it to fire because I'm using K-Tuner software. Um, yeah, I don't know, I guess we'll just kind of see what happens, but uh, the clutch right now is just the same stock, or not stock, uh, eBay Stage 3 I've been running for a few years, so I think I'm either going to run out of fuel because I'm running 660 injectors, but I do have a Walbro pump and stuff, but I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not shooting for huge power, so I didn't go overkill. But yeah, I'm either gonna probably run out of fuel or my clutch may start slipping anything after like, I would say 320. And even then, 320 is gonna be fast in this little car. As you can see, just from those popping in, we ain't got nothing in here, just the roll bar and stuff and uh, front half of the interior. But yeah, so just gonna hang out, wait till my time is ready. I'm gonna go get some lunch here. I got uh, some buddies on the way and they're gonna scoop me up and uh, yeah we're gonna go grab some food and for those of you asking I get my Hondas tuned at exact dyno here in Tempe Arizona by Tim and he's always in my car's justice and I don't have any issues so I'm gonna keep coming back so let's hope for the best let's hope the car does okay because my biggest concern has been mostly oiling and cooling issues uh, we seem to be good it's just like I added a lot of oil cooler stuff water lines and stuff for the turbo and just that stuff gets stressful, so let's just hope for the best. Crazy little Batmobile looking thing on the dyno right now. I don't even know what that is. Sounds cool though. Just a bit of time. I got some rumblies in my tummy. Scale of one to ten. How many butterflies you got? Nine. I'm actually here instead of sitting at work, anticipating being here, but I don't know. I am hungry though. We are currently waiting on Ramon to show up. Yeah. No polar bear yet. suction in there. There we go. So I'm out for a four bar just in case. I mean I only have the seven pound spray in there but with boost creep assuming there is some you never know. And if I need to turn it up just be safe. Have you called Dennis? Not yet. I'm gonna call Should I spit on or should I grab some oil from the dipstick? I, be I don't know. Yeah. Which one lubricates more? I'm terrified of tearing O-rings. I wonder if I have to pull this ground uh, off. I don't know if it'll come up all tall enough. <laughs> the caps stayed in on two of them. Ooh, there's that. I should probably put them all on the rail first and then wiggle them down in there. I think that's usually <laughs> It kind of depends on the mood. So, should I use some of the oil that's built up on my rail or should I grab some, or fuel, or should I grab some oil off the dipstick? Sugar span. I hate doing this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always. The oil just makes it so you don't have to rush so much. Yeah, I just always tear them like I've never had. Uh, yeah, never I'd had. say a little oil wouldn't hurt. If they're tear. 
they like to tear. Yeah, because I think that happened the last time I was here with my Del Sol when we toured with that a few years ago. It just... And they stick and tear? Yeah. Uh, One small fight later. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a scary fight. Just because I, I just I hate wasting people's time. So I wanted to be as 100% prepared as I could coming in. So what y'all do? So that's it. Now they're all hooked in. Yeah. So injectors are in. Uh, four bore map sensors in, and then uh, I just added the coupler back since I popped it off to drive it here, so I wouldn't build boost because I don't have a boost map, so computer wouldn't know what to do with it. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we should be good. <laughs> Um, yeah, now I'm oily, covered in gas, and very, very hungry. Papa Doge back in his natural habitat with the Yodas. Man, that's beautiful. <laughs> Toyota was actually Honda too, but Toyota was on their game with the nerdiest thing to geek out about, but taillights. <laughs> they had so many beautiful taillights on their cars in the 90s. Yeah. Um, headlights maybe not so much, but yeah. I mean, you look at this, you look at S2000 RX-8s and oh, everything yeah. that came out afterwards, and it was like kind of the same, you know, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, just love these cars. Soon. Soon. Oof. Stuff in the works. Are we, le we leaking info? Oh, leaking <laughs> info. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe a Mark V soon. Yeah. It's just nice seeing one that's so original. But like how illegal is it? Like, well, they took care of the headlights too, because usually these things yellow out really, really bad. Yeah. These and like the Lexuses, they yeah. use the same polycarbonate or something, they yellow out and people don't <laughs> clear them out. And these are in really good shape. You think you can take them? <laughs> no. After what he was saying? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, this thing's not stock. It's still got a pillander in the middle though. He's modified it. Oh. Yeah. It's like a stage three. Yeah, okay. it's not just a normal Pollander, whatever you just called it. Parker, where's Mr. Drive Low? Pollander. Oh, you're retarded. You're welcome. <laughs> so he's uh, finishing up tinkering with the ECU, getting it set up for the injectors, the map sensor, etc. So, yeah, you guys have seen Dino stuff before. There's not a whole lot of excitement that happens in the beginning. He has to start on a boost map, which is different from the NA map that is on the key tuner stuff. So he has to basically start the tune from scratch. Um, well, scratch from the base map. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll watch it and film what we can. Doja vlogger? No. The worst. Yeah. Just got it started. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was just messing with the computer. I had to change the injectors and all that, so. Oh, so right I didn't miss time. anything. No, you're right on time. Yeah, because my girlfriend's job is about five to ten minutes from your place. Oh. So <laughs> I was on the road fucking zooming. Like yeah, you. no, you literally, as soon as you parked, you started turning the car on. Oh, okay, perfect timing. There when you bought it. That's all. Yeah. Oh, the Supra? There's between that and another one. I was like, get this. It's loaded ever since. Your car makes my bottle vibrate when I point it at it. <laughs> no, I'm not lying. It's really weird. If I put the cap on it, it's not vibrating. Sound like a gosh darn oh, 747. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the fuel. It's own layer. Who needs it? <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> Throw your batteries in the ocean too. Yeah, it recharges the eels. It's my favorite <laughs> joke of that. It's just Food. Food tier, finally. I'm so hungry, I'm like shaking. The glizzy goblin. Glow. Oh. You just missed the first half a pull, and it half sounds like a, a 747 diesel loading up. So we ran into an immediate problem, and that is that
that the sorry I'm trying to watch traffic here. Um, that is my my naive my naivety. I, I've never done an externally wastegated setup before. I did not know how to set it up and I set it up incorrectly, so just over boosting. So I gotta fix that because it's not fixable on the dyno right now because of where I have it placed. So basically I just gotta reroute a vacuum line just because I'm dumb. And uh, to be fair, my thing did not come with the instructions on plumbing. But yeah, so we'll pick this video up next week when we finish the dyno because I just gotta go home tonight, let the car cool, and then fix it. Ugh, it's always something. I was over prepared yet under prepared. All right, so just to reiterate exactly what I was talking about, basically what had happened is I read the diagram or I misread the diagrams online about plumbing up the boost controller, the three port, max, max solenoid, max valve, whatever it's called. So basically what I had done is I thought that the, I, I didn't realize, because this is a Tile MVS 38 millimeter waste case. So basically, let me try and show you underneath so it's easier to understand. So basically the issue that I ran into is I thought that this port right here was the top and I thought that this port where you see right here where this fitting is, I thought that was the bottom. I didn't realize that all the air fittings and stuff like where this screw is here and so on around it, I didn't realize those were bottom ports because again, I'm, not, I'm new to the uh, external gates. So I had both top portions plumbed up and um, yeah, it was basically just letting the turbo run whatever it wanted. So um, yeah, now I have it plumbed correctly, I do believe. And I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to leave this one capped off now because I have it plumbed bottom over here, top over here just for you know access. But water lines are not hooked up, so the water line hoses or fittings are just left open as I was told per the little bit of instructions that were in the box for the for the wastegate. And then I also developed a gnarly oil leak from my drain line, which you can see up there. Maybe. Yeah, so there's the drain line. Basically what had happened is when I originally put this in the car, um, gosh, there's no room in here. So basically when I put the drain line in the car, I uh, had the downpipe in the way, which normally sits right here, which is now coated in oil. Um, but yeah, put the downpipe in. This was moved, this wasn't on the car yet, so I was able to get the wrench up there a little bit, but I guess I just didn't snug it enough. And then uh, on the drive to the dyno, it kind of vibrated, so by the time I made it home yesterday, I had a fat puddle of oil on top of the subframe, so that's obviously not good. Um, but I just went to take it off, and then I put the wrench on that upper portion, realized that it was loose, so I uh, snugged it up, cranked it in really good, so we should be good there, should be good here, and now I just gotta wait another week for the dyno to uh, take me back in, because you know, obviously people are scheduled, so just frustrating. Yeah, just look at how nasty this thing is, and I've already tried wiping it all off, because this whole thing's Cerakoted, so um, the Cerakote wasn't even 100% done baking or curing it, so that's now just baked in there. Freaking nasty. Yeah, that was uh, definitely my fault, and the reason I couldn't fix it on the dyno is obviously, as you can see, the wastegate is way tough down there, and after uh, idling for 20 minutes or whatever, however long he was building the base mat for and stuff, and then doing the two or three pulls before he finally was like, something's wrong. I mean, overboost protection was kicking in, and that's why he was, he did like three pulls and overboost hit every time. Um, first one was the most dangerous one, it hit 25 pounds, thankfully it didn't hurt the engine. Um, and like it, it probably it definitely should have been set lower to begin with but I mean it is what it is I thought I did everything right but uh, you know I, I was having the trouble with the injectors I thought that was gonna be my biggest issue so thankfully that's not the issue now um, but I uh, I'm gonna put the car down a little bit lower now um, and then I'm just gonna fire it up and watch for leaks and let it idle but I'm just gonna pick this video up next week when we go go back to the dyno so we can finish this up but yeah my mistake um, I learned well, it is a week later now, and it's time for the dyno um, again. So, let's hope that this one goes better. So the initial dyno session, I didn't even have a boost gauge, so I went and I added an auto meter one. So this one seems to be more accurate based off of my readings compared to Glowshift. Glowshift, I've always liked their stuff, but um, accuracy can always be questionable at times. Like, I mean, my oil pressure gauge has been in here for a few years now, so every now and again it gets a little wonky. Oil temp is brand new, and you know, AEM is always good to go. But uh, yeah, so as for boost gauge, I didn't have the money to spend on an AEM. So auto meter, as old school as it is, it seems to be working the best. It's just straight vacuum line straight to the manifold that I added a T fitting, or I'm sorry, I added a bung on the bottom side of my PRB manifold to. And then it's literally, I just wired in the power for the, uh, 
uh, the backlight. So super simple, it's effective. Let's get on down to the dyno. Made it safely back to the dyno, and there's actually a yellow DA with, I think, a Sea West or a Wings West wing on here. That's pretty sweet, but it is cooking. It is hot. It's like 104. Oh, it's 100 right now, at least. So according to my watch. But right now, the only thing I'm noticing is my oil temp is between 210, 220. I don't know the optimal oil temp setting. Oh, and I broke my cut open again. Great. But yeah, so we did it. Okay, nonetheless. So while he's starting to work on the low cam stuff, I just want to point out this sick DA that I've never seen, and I've seen just about almost every Integra like DA at least worth mentioning in Arizona. This thing's got an old school gritty kit on it. Bunch of custom work, old school gritty gauges, like Nice little Garrett turbo on there. Looks like a little T25. Freaking sick. Yo, can we take a minute to just ask the question, do this tree be creaming or do it be uh, squirting? Because it's all over the ground. But yeah, this thing's also got like a gritty oil pressure setup, fuel pressure gauge setup. Like so many weird old school things like gritty oil pressure meter like that big old box thing there, I've never seen that in my life. So either the dude that owns this got some old parts from a buddy or a dad or something, or the dude himself is older than I am. Um, but either way, this is a dope little setup, so congrats to whoever owns this. Wonder what she'll make. Little T25, little log manifold, nice recirculated wastegate setup. So I'm thinking this thing will probably make it happy. Assuming it's a stock motor, I guess this guy will be making high 200s, mid 200s, I don't know. Gate opens up hard though. I gotta say, I could lie and I could make excuses, but I'm just gonna uh, just take it because I didn't listen to what you guys were saying and turns out a lot of you guys are a lot more correct than I anticipated. We'll talk about it more when I get home, but the car didn't make what I hoped. Alright, so let me, freaking chair is falling, I'm still falling, so let me just preface this by saying, like I reiterate in that last clip, I, uh, I eat my words, and uh, I apologize for anybody that messaged me or commented and was like, oh no, that's trash, your mat log manifold's gonna restrict, and I was like, eh, it'll be alright, so like, I don't think I was outright just like, no, it's gonna make all the power, and again, I wasn't going for all the power, 
but I am disappointed with the power I got. So ending numbers were basically 260. Um, I'll look at the sheet here. I don't remember the torque, but I was just having flow restrictions. So we threw everywhere from seven to 13 pounds at it and it just kept um, clogging up right at the top. So um, not even at the top, it was the first half was great. It was breathing really well. And then the higher end of the RPM range, uh, again, I'll show you the dyno sheet here in a sec, but yeah, so you guys are right. Those of you that commented or messaged me or whatever saying like, hey, do a tubular. Um, I think part of the reason I made less than anticipated is because I also used inch and a quarter schedule 10 pipe uh, for the runners instead of like inch and a half or two inch. So yeah, lesson learned. I believe you all very well now that K-series do not like log manifolds. So let's look at the sheet really quick. But yeah, I also want to say that the car did fantastic otherwise, especially on the drive home. I am going to email my tuner. Um, there is a slight like stumbling at mid or partial throttle on freeways that I want him to see if he can clean up a little bit. But other than that, the tune is great. Um, the car, I mean, honestly, this is still the fastest car I've owned. I, I'm Fight me, whatever. And the 260 that I made, it's just enough where the tires are just about to break and I'm on some old RE71Rs right now, so 200 treadwares. So the car just feels great. It pulls hard, and I don't really need that much power, but you bet your ass I'm gonna try and talk to, say, PLM, see if they wanna work with me. Because as much as I'd love to build a manifold, if I can just get a manifold um, at this point, I'm probably just gonna do that so I don't have to rebuild and put out that much money for everything else. But the car feels great, but I did notice that freeway speeds because part of my drive is up home, and it is middle of the day, and it is about 103 degrees right now. So at the point where you're like, quarter throttle a little over quarter throttle trying to trudge up the hill the turbo is working a bit uh, my cooling system just can't quite handle it my temp gauge went to just a hair over the half mark like a hair over, yeah hair over the half so i think a spall fan is in the upgrade but let's look at the sheet really quick and see what we're looking like so you can see we made basically 160 horsepower and 215 foot pounds of torque so that's a solid 60 almost foot pounds more than previous and then this is a solid 60 horsepower basically more uh, technically 50 on the dot um, close to 60 I, I made like 206 previously um, naturally aspirated so seven pounds because we tuned it down to wastegate pressure because you can see all these different colored lines here so let me zoom in a little bit there we go so each of these different color lines these are all different boost levels so the highest of which i want to say was this silver one right here and i want to say that was 12 or 13 pounds and you can see up to basically the torque crossover torque obviously dips down but this is the rpm and it just it won't build any higher like I don't know if this shows it as well as he did on the computer to me, but basically the engine is just getting super choked out after 6,000 RPM. It cannot breathe. So there you guys have it. Again, I eat my words. You guys were right. I was wrong. That's part of the learning curve though, and I'm glad that I did learn. I am bummed about the loss of money because now I have to put out for a new manifold and or materials for manifold to build one. I have to build a new downpipe, which is more money. I got to re coat those two things, which is another few hundred bucks and then go back for another tune, which is another few hundred bucks. So all in all, this setup is going to have to hang out for a while because I can't afford it right now. So um, I'm gonna try reaching out to PLM. If you guys, a few of you guys suggested that before, I'm gonna try doing that. So whatever, there you have it. Super restrictive log manifold, K20, 165,000-ish miles junkyard engine on seven pounds of wastegate pressure. Gets you, got me right around basically 260 wheel. And uh, either way, I'm still stoked with how the car feels, but there's always room for improvement, so you can bet your butt we will. Anyways, guys, do what you love. Forget about the rest. Thanks for hanging out with me here on the channel today. If you want to help support the channel, by all means, please do so. Like, comment, subscribe. Share the videos around with your friends. Hit up my merch page at chrisdowski.bigcartel.com, and I also have a Patreon for those of you who really want to support and get some behind-the-scenes stuff. Anyways, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Stay cool.